हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो दिस वीडियो प्रॉब्लम एलिस एंड बॉब प्लेइंग फ्लावर गेम अगेन दिस प्रॉब्लम इज कंसिडरिंग अ थर्ड प्रॉब्लम इट्स एक्चुअली इजी बट आफ्टर ऑब्वियसली इन द एंड व्हेन यू नो द सॉल्यूशन आई विल इंप्रोवाइज दैट सॉल्यूशन व्हिच विल एक्चुअली इन्वॉल्व सम मैथ्स कांसेप्ट्स एंड दैट्स गोइंग टू बी अ ग्रेट पार्ट ग्रेट प्लस ऑब्वियसली फ्लैगशिप और बेसिकली सेलिंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो लेट्स सी द प्रॉब्लम सेज प्रॉब्लम सेज दैट वी हैव एलिस एंड बॉम एंड दे आर प्लेइंग फॉर श्योर ऑलवेज एलिस एंड बॉब प्ले द गेम आई डोंट नो व्हेन वी विल गेट द चांस टू प्ले द गेम बट या एलिस एंड बॉब आर प्लेइंग द गेम turn based game on a circular field surrounded by flowers so you can imagine that we have some flowers and it's a circular field in which alice and bob are playing the game now the circle represents the field which means this field this circle is actually a field of flowers and there are x flowers in the clockwise direction between alice and bob so let's say if i have a alice here and bob here then in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction I have x flowers and y flowers in the anti anti clockwise. So in the anti clockwise direction, I will have y flowers. Okay. Now uh, the game proceeds as follows. The Alice takes the first turn, and what he mean by taking a turn is in the each turn, a player must choose either the clockwise or the anti clockwise direction and pick one flower from that side. So Alice can either Alice is standing here, so either he can pick or she can pick. I don't know. Uh, either the clockwise direction flower. or the anti clockwise direction flower any one of them she will or he will pick now when that is done okay one of the flowers will actually go let's say he picked the anti clockwise direction flower so that flower will actually go away and ultimately the same turn by turn which means okay let's say alice pick this flower then bob will pick next flower then alice will pick next flower again flower which he can pick either clockwise or anti clockwise so he can either pick this flower or this flower so he can pick any flowers so maybe while reading up till this portion we might think that okay alice has two options bob has two options so maybe we can involve dp maybe we can think up again we have just read up till so far up till this point we have read and maybe we are thinking in the back of mind while reading itself maybe we can involve a dp because it is pick left pick right or basically for left you have pick or not pick Or you can say for right, you have pick or not pick. Which means if you if you say not pick from right, I mean I will pick from left. If I say pick from right, so I'll pick from right. So up to so far, I'm thinking maybe I can involve DP, but I'm not sure. I'll read the problem firstly complete. Now we have two integers n and m. Now okay, what this n and m means? The task is to compute the number of possible ways x and y. Now you remember right? We had x flowers in the clockwise, y flowers in the anti-clockwise. So they are saying that I will give you n and m. I'll give you n and m, and you have to just figure out some x, which means x can be anything between one to n, y can be anything between one to n. So it's my liberty to choose any number of clockwise flowers, my liberty to choose any number of anti-clockwise flowers. This is my liberty which I can choose. Now, uh, now, okay. Now my main task is Alice must win the game according to the described rules above. And also, just says that x and y. What x and y can be? That x can be in the clockwise direction, in the range from one to n. Which means, in the clockwise direction, I can either put one flower, two flower, three flower, four flower, or n flowers. It's my option. I have to figure out that possible x and y pair. Which means, how many flowers in the left? How many flowers flowers in the right? When I say left, means I actually mean the clockwise. I actually mean anti-clockwise here. And uh, same for y. I need to figure out the number of flowers. And we have to return the possible number of pairs. So are we saying that we are going to apply DP? Mm, maybe, maybe not. But if you go back and look, there is one thing done. If there are no flowers left at all, the current player plays. The current player captures the opponent and wins the game. So again, this point is the most important point. If there are no flowers left at all, which means I am not saying in one direction there are no flowers left. I mean, entirely in my entire garden, there should be no flowers left. Which means, let's say if you had this specific arrangement, let's say Alice picked the anti-clockwise flower. Okay, next chance is Bob's. Bob is standing here, so he picked anti-clockwise flower. Then Alice picked anti-clockwise flower again. So you might say, okay, are you Alice and Bob are now close to each other? So will Alice will all the flowers should be finished? and the one at the end turn at the end of the turn which means after taking the flower if there are no flowers left the current player who has taken the last flower will actually win 
So I am saying it is not important. Okay, if one side flowers are finished, all the flowers should be finished. Only then I can say that okay, this is the last flower to take in the entire garden, and whosoever takes the last flower will actually win. So that is that that makes a problem very 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 easy. How? Let's imagine that we have. N as three, which means again, when I say N, I mean I can place either one flower, two flower, or three flower on the clockwise side. If my M is two, I can say okay, either I can have one flower or two flower on the anti-clockwise side. Now, considering right now the case, let's put three flowers on the clockwise and two flowers on the anti-clockwise. Now, when I have put this flowers, Alice will go first. Alice will go first. Again, it doesn't matter. Alice go wherever. Okay, Alice goes first. Let's say here. Then Bob, let's say goes first here. Again, the game will never finish until unless all the flowers will go away. Now, Alice will go again. Alice will kill one, like take one flower. Bob will again take one flower. Now, last, like now, Alice will go and take one flower. Okay, this is the last flower which Alice could take for sure. For sure, Alice will take this specific last flower, and then when he when he will take it, okay, for sure, it's it's last flower which in which was in the in the garden, and Alice took that. Thus, Alice won. So you remembered, like for me, flower on left and right, it never mattered. It never mattered. It's just that I know for sure if I have just close your eyes, imagine that this is not a garden. This is not a garden which is circular. If Alice is here, he will just take one flower. Okay, one flower is taken. Bob will take one flower. Alice will take one flower. Take any flower, any flower. Bob will take other other flower. Now last flower, last flower. Oh, which means up till so far, Alice and Bob have taken equal flowers. Equal number, equal number combined is an even number. Oh, then the last flower, added flower, which means okay, even number plus one value, even plus one, actually is a odd. So as soon as if I have odd flowers in total in my garden, for sure Alice will win, because I saw that up till up till the last up till the last chance, Alice and Bob are taking equal number of flowers, which means let's say Alice took X flowers, so Bob also took X flowers, but then. X X plus X is two X. Two X is even value, even. But then last, I am saying that the last flower will be taken by the Alice, which means one more flower Alice will take. So I am saying two X plus one is the total number of flowers in the garden. Then Alice will win, which means even plus one value is an odd value. So if I have odd number of flowers, two X plus one, then Alice will for sure win. Else, in other case, which will like when I have even number of flowers, as you can see in this case, again my N was three, M M was two. So I can take my X any way whatsoever. Between one and n and one and m for y, so I can see. Okay, Alice will take one flower. Bob, Bob will take one flower. Alice will take one flower. Bob will take one flower. Bob was the last person to to take the flower. Thus, Bob won. But I want Alice to win. So I just want. I just want number of possibilities. I just want number of possibilities. Again, I want number of possibilities such that the sum of x and y is odd. Because I want the number of ways Alice can win. I want the number of ways possibilities of x and y such that Alice can win. So I want I want to have such number of x and such number of y's such that the answer is out. Now coming on that how in numeric terms or algebraic terms answer can be odd sum we can have odd. Okay, I want the odd sum which means x plus y. X is on the clockwise, Y is on the anti-clockwise. I want this sum to be odd. If this sum is odd, then I know that for sure Alice will win. That is what I want. Now, sum any sum in numeric algebra, it can be odd only when one of them is even, other them, which means X is even, Y is odd, or X is odd, Y is even. These are the only two possibilities for a pair to actually give up odd sum. So I can now represent the same thing, exact same thing. Let's imagine my n is five and my m is six. So I know that my x possibilities can be a one, two, three, or four, or five. My y possibilities can be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So I can easily say, okay, um, I want my odd sum. And I didn't told that, okay, I can have if I take even from one side, then I have to take odd from other side. Which, which means if I take even here, then I have to take odd here. So let's imagine, okay, let's R n. Let's firstly take Put one flower here. If I put a one flower here, I want the flower sum to be. I want a flower sum to be odd, which means count of flowers. One flower is here. I want. Okay, this is a odd. So for sure, I I can only take even number of flowers in the y side. So I will try to place either two flowers or four flowers or six flowers because I know I can have two, four, and six. So I can place two, four, or six. So for this specific one, for this specific one, 
which means I, I put just one number of flowers. I have three options here. Two, four, and six. Okay, great. So in my answer for this one, for this one flower, putting only one flower on this X side, I can add a three answer. Okay, let's take, let's take the next one, which is two. If my, if my flower is actually even, okay, if my flower is, I have put even number of flowers. I put two flowers on my clockwise. So I have to put the odd number of flowers. So I will put a one, three, and a five. Okay, one, three, and five. Again, three options. If I put a three, I now I have three flowers on the clockwise side. So I will have or e, sorry, even number of flowers on the anti-clockwise. So I can again put a two, four, and six in the anti-clockwise. So I can again have a three. So okay, again for four, you will have again have for five, again for five, for six, again. So this is how you can keep on adding for every of those numbers. Now, a uh, very normal thing that. Uh, you will see that for I okay this is the odd number I want the even number count in here right and same odd number even number count in here odd sorry odd number even number count in here and same way for even for even number for even number I want odd number count in here for even number I want odd number count in here for even number, I want odd number count in here so for every of the odd number I want the number of even numbers on the M side so what I will do is I will find my even of Y even of y is the number of even numbers in the range 1 to m number even of y is the number of even numbers in the range from 1 to m and same is for odd y number of odd numbers in the range from 1 to n and again that's very easy to find out uh, even number is nothing but m by 2 odd number is nothing but m by 2 again uh, you have to manage that m plus 1 by 2 all the stuff i'll show you that right now but yeah you just want to figure out the number of odd numbers in the range 1 to m and the number of even numbers in the range 1 to m and the same way okay i know that for every of the odd for every of the odd number in the x side i just multiply this even number count so okay i know how many number of odd numbers were there it was 1 3 and 5 so i just want to say number of odd numbers odd numbers in the x side odd numbers number of odd numbers in the number of odd numbers in the x side will be actually multiplied with the number of even numbers on the y side and the same ways number of even numbers number of even of x on the x side will actually multiplied with the number of odd numbers on the y side so this is the actual formula which ultimately is the formula which we have even in the x odd in the y multiplied and then odd in the x multiplied with even in the y that is a final answer for us so if we go and look back, we will have even in x is nothing but n by 2. Odd in x is nothing but n plus 1 by 2. Now, r in y is that n plus 1 by 2? Because if you have remembered, um, this is a standard technique. You have to take the seal, seal value. Now, although I'll just prove the entire thing, which is, okay, this is right now. I'm just, I've showed you what I've showed above. Exact same formula. But I will also simplify it. And that the math, math, te math technique, I'll also show you. But meanwhile, uh, just look at that. You have even of x and odd of... Uh, x even of y and odd of y now simply to get the even number you just take the floor value which means if you have a number let's say 5 and 6 the only reason i have taken number 5 and 6 so that i can cover all the possible cases for you i i was about to take the number 3 and 2 also because i wanted one number as odd and other as even so i have to cover all the possibilities so as to show you but 5 and 6 actually have bigger range so i could show you multiple things now uh, coming on back now if we have 5 so you can see even numbers in this range 1 to 5 will be nothing but 2 and 4. So I want the count. Count will be nothing but 5 by 2, which is the floor value. Now, the count of odd numbers, if I do a simple 5 by 2, will actually give me a 2. But I know the count of odd numbers is 1, 3, 5. Because of this being an odd number, I can't just simply divide by 2 to get the count of odd numbers. So it's the reason I just did a n plus 1 by 2. So with this, I'll get a 3. Because I know the count of odd numbers are actually 3. And the same way, uh, you can see if m is 6, so I can just simply do a count of even numbers will be m by 2. Floor value 2, 4, 6, number of, uh, number of e even values are 3. And the same way, uh, count of odd values are simple. m plus 1 by 6, which means 7 by 2, which is 3. Again, 1, 3, 5 are the odd values. And that's how you have got even count of x, even count of odd, odd, odd count of x, even of y, odd of y. And the result will be nothing but even x multiplied by odd y, odd y multiplied by even x. And that's the answer. Although that's the overall solution, and you can simply go and skip the next part. But in the discuss page, I saw an amazing technique by someone, I forgot the name, that actually reduced the entire thing to just n into m by 2. This is the only thing. Just write instead of everything. Just don't do anything. Don't do any of this. Just return, just return n into m by 2. 
n into m by 2 and that's the answer now to prove this let's look at how we can prove this now you saw that okay i have taken ns5 now i just i just show you how that numbers are actually made so number of even numbers are actually the are actually n by 2 now n by 2 in actual terms in c plus plus java python is nothing but a floor division now floor division to represent the floor division i will say that rather than just saying n by 2 I can represent again to represent a sealed division. See a sealed division to represent the sealed division. You do a n plus one by two. That is how you write it. Again, base two is there. That's the reason plus one is added. Okay, make sure because if base p would have been this, I would have added plus a p minus one. So that is one thing. Okay, but yeah, right now base two is there. So n plus one by two is the sealed division. Same way the floor division looks like. Floor division looks like n minus n. Again, this n o n o is n odd by two. I'll tell you what this n o means. N o means if the number is odd, I will be placing a one here. Else, I'll placing a zero here. Well, I I'll show I'll show how it will impact. But yeah, floor division is n minus n o by two. Again, the same way uh, for odd odd number, it is nothing but n plus n o by two. Because you remember right? You just add a plus one n plus one by two n plus one by two the same way. n plus n o by two again the same way for m it is m minus m o floor division is m minus m o by two again for floor division you are just subtracting the m o or n o n o is nothing but representing that number n was the odd or not if the n number n is odd n o will be one if number n is even n o will be zero and the same way uh, I can represent my sealed division or basically the this odd y as a sealed division okay n m plus one by two I can represent the same thing as m plus n o by two now um coming on back this is a floor division this is a sealed division of all these numbers to count the even and the odd frequencies you got to know that n n m o is one only when n and m is odd now if i just give you a glance of how the numbers are formed n was five here n was five here n o you can see five is odd so n o will be one five minus one is by two is two so you saw that you got a two frequencies of even numbers which is two and four that's the reason subtracting a one from an odd number will not impact its even frequency count subtracting a one because it because subtracting a one will give me a number four and that is a maximum even number which could be, have been there below this odd number that's the reason the formula is built something like this and that's it like that, that's a quick for you to actually make sure to actually help in future although it's just an improvisation automatically to go short you can skip the part also, also if you want now coming on back uh the same way if i do a sealed division for sure one needs to be added in my odd number which is five so i do a five plus one by two i get a three which is the number of one two, one three and five now the same way for m equal to six i did a six minus zero again i will not subtract anything because i know that it is nothing but a zero like it's uh, it's actually a number like it's it's it's, it's an actual number so i'll do a six by two i get a three same way you will see three two four and six number of even numbers because i want the six as the maximum even number and the same way i'll do a six by two again plus one if even if you add a plus one or not uh, that will not impact your answer so i'll simply do a six plus zero by two that will be a six even if you add a plus one it will still not impact your even odd count because still the numbers are one, three, and five only. Now, uh, coming on back, it's one, three, and five. So you saw that, okay? How this is how you can actually convert your even again. Your even x is nothing but n minus n o by two. Odd x is n plus n o by two. Even y is m minus m o by two. Odd y is m plus m o by two. Now, writing the exact same and substituting the exact above formula. I will have n minus n o by two multiplied by m plus m o by two for odd, and the same way n plus m n o by two. M minus M O by two. Now I'll simply just evaluate it. Something will cut, 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 cut. Simple. Now I will finally remain with this two into N M minus two into N O minus N O into M O. Now two, 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 a two will go. So you will see it will finally become N minus M minus N O minus like N O M O by two. Now if I write the exact same, like let's imagine this N N N M. Let's let's take as a one like one 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 value big X. So I can write the same thing as X minus X O by two. If you remember, this was nothing but the representation of 
lower division so i can write the exact same thing as x by 2 also because if you remember i was doing a n by 2 then i transform this to a n minus n o by 2 so i could know i can transfer back also so i can transform this number back which means i can transform this my x minus x o by 2 to back to x by 2 and this x by 2 x if you remember you transform n m so your number is n into m by 2 and for a proof to show you i will show you that okay if you take your n as again n as odd value m as odd value so it will be a 15 5 into 3 15 minus 1 you can do because see again both were odd so 1 into 1 so it will be a 1 so 15 15 5 3 15 minus 1 will actually become a 14 so 15 by 2 and 14 by 2 both are same both are same and the same way same way if one of them is even or both of them is even which means if as you can see one of them is even if one of them is even which means m m was even so m0 would have been 0 so this n0 into m0 would actually be a 0 and this is 0 so you will get an even number because you multiply with an even number and even number by 2 should actually be an even number by 2 only so that's the reason you can actually reduce that to n into m by 2 again if this proof was not understandable to you just go and look back but that's the extra part for you to just make sure that you actually understand this some fancy maths concept but yeah that's not required at all cool thanks for watching bye bye Ta -da.